and it's the largest lymphatic vessel in the body, extending from the upper part of the abdomen to the lower part of the neck, crossing the exterior and the superior part of the mediastinum, about 45 centimeter or 18 inches long. It has a beaded appearance because of the presence of many valves in the lumen. The thoracic duct begins as a continuation of the upper end of the cisterna chyla near the lower border of the 12th thoracic vertebra and enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. It then ascends to the posterior mediastinum from the level of 12th thoracic vertebra to the 5th thoracic vertebra, after which it crosses from the right to the left side. Then it courses through the superior mediastinum along the left edge of the esophagus to the esophagus and which is the neck. In the neck, it arches laterally at the level of the transverse process of the seventh cervical vertebra. Finally, it descends in front of the first part of the left subclavian artery and ends by joining and ends by opening into the angle between the junction, the junction between the left subclavian and the left internal jugular veins. Relations at the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Anteriorly we have the diaphragm, posteriorly the vertebral column. To the right side we have the azygous vein and to the left side we have the aorta. In the posterior mediastinum relations over here, anteriorly the diaphragm esophagus, the cut end of the esophagus, the right pleural recess. Posteriorly, we have the vertebral column, the right posterior intercostal arteries, the terminal part of the hemiazygous system. To the right side, we have the azygous vein. To the left side, we have the descending thoracic artery. To the right side, right. in the superior mediastinum, anteriorly we have the arch of iota, the origin of the left subclavian artery, posteriorly the vertebral column, to the right esophagus and to the left we have the pleura. In the neck, the uh, thoracic duct forms an arch rising about 3 to 4 cm above the clavicle. The arch has the following relations. Anteriorly, the left common carotid artery, the left vagus and the left internal jugular vein. Posteriorly, the vertebral artery and the vein, not <coughs> visible over here. In the sympathetic trunk, the thyrocervical trunk, posteriorly, as you can see over here. The medial border <coughs> of the scalenus anterior over here. The prevertebral fascia covering the structures mentioned. And the first part of the left subclavian artery. Tributaries. The thoracic duct receives limb from roughly both halves of the body below the diaphragm and the left half above the diaphragm, right? In the thorax, the thoracic duct receives lymph vessels from the posterior mediastinal nodes and from small intercostal nodes. At the root of the neck, efferent vessels of the nodes in the neck form left jugular trunk 
and those from node in the axilla from the left subclavian trunk. Right. So this is the area bringing by the right lymphatic duct. The left bronchometastinal trunk brings limb from the left half of the thorax and end in the thoracic duct on the right side. There is a right lymphatic duct into which the right bronchometastinal, right jugular and the right subclavian lymph trunk trunks drain. The right lymphatic trunk ends in the right brachiocephalic vein at the junction on the right subclavian and the right internal 